Let's begin this session with a couple of long, slow, deep breaths. I've always loved the desert, always. The deep peace, the stillness, the big sky and the land, sometimes it feels so vast and empty. It could be Mars, a vast panorama of what may seem empty, but it's a trickster. It's a trickster. It's not empty. Not really. For many years, I lived in that hot, dry heat that bakes the Southern California Mojave Desert in the Coachella Valley. It's where I first began to regularly and consistently meditate. I was about 22 or 23 when I moved to the Coachella Valley. No, it wasn't that Coachella. That wasn't there yet. That Coachella would take another 30 years before it would appear. The Coachella Valley Desert that I moved to, it was so still and peaceful and quiet. It was about 20 miles from Palm Springs. My home soon became a 40-acre citrus ranch with an abundance of oranges and grapefruits, mandarins and lemons, dates, date palms, and there was a gigantic freshwater lake that relieved the heat of the desert day with a swim. It was beautiful. The days were filled with exploring the desert canyons, the dried up riverbeds, and thoroughly enjoying the sun, the desert sand, and that deep blue sky. I originally moved there to go to nursing school. To me, moving away from the city to this rural desert oasis felt like a Garden of Eden paradise that was set in the middle of a vast, often hot, sometimes windy, definitely wild and sandy, and miles and miles of empty, barren desert sitting on the foothills of the San Andreas Mountains. <clears throat> it was stunningly beautiful. It had a sense of Middle Eastern biblical destiny that was embedded in the color and the smell and the rocks of those desert mountains, those desert hills and those sand dunes. I loved it there. The property was owned by Dr. Carol Carlson. He was one of the early research pioneers and the practitioners of psychedelic medicine. But Dr. Carol Carlson and his Garden of Eden Paradise, that's another story for another time. Because this is a story about how I began to regularly meditate. Living alone with lots of spare time, I learned to meditate and I was inspired from a book that I read. The title of the book was called The Master Game, Pathways to Higher Consciousness. It was written by Robert D. Ropp. He was an Englishman that wound up moving to Northern California eventually. 
Durop begins his book by pointing out that life is made up of the games that we choose to play. Choose a game worth playing, he counsels, because he says what people really need and demand from life is not wealth, comfort, or esteem, but the games worth playing. The games worth playing. He goes on to say that those who cannot find a game worth playing, and they're apt to fall prey to boredom, unhappiness, depression, and worse, a paralysis of the spirit and a will to live. There are low games and there are high games. Narop considered the lower games to be chasing money, fame, power. The higher games, those were the games that were seeking salvation, knowledge, or beauty. And the highest of those higher games is the master game. Mm, the master game. Durop cautioned again that the master game is the most difficult of all the games to play. That the attainment of full consciousness, what is called awakening or enlightenment, is full awakening. Durop cautions again that if life does not seem to offer a game worth playing, then invent one. Make it up. For it must be clear even to the most clouded intelligence that any game is better than no game. So it was the inspiration from reading this book and from my past karmic influences that I chose to play the master game. And I chose to follow the path of spiritual ascendancy. That was the game I chose. That was the game I chose to play and that I continue to play. Even though I'm just an average player. It was from reading Durop's book, The Master Game, and following his meditative guidance, that I first learned to meditate. And I first learned to meditate using the autogenic relaxation technique. Uh, autogenic training is a century-old European method. It's based upon passive concentration and body awareness of specific sensations of heat and heaviness. It was originally developed by Johannes Schultz. He was a German psychiatrist, and he used hypnosis in his practice, and he noticed that it induced relaxation. So he created this self-hypnotic technique that he called autogenic training, and it induces a state of relaxation. So, let's do some autogenic relaxation right now. And, of course, you can always do it again later. So you're going to follow this guided meditation that I'm going to lead. So find a comfortable place to lie or sit down. Turn off the bright lights. Turn your phone off. Take a few healing deep breaths. Listen to my recorded talk. It's about 15 minutes. Breathe and relax.